Christy house. Yes, Christy Tasker is in the house. We love Christy Tasker. She is the absolute. <laughs> Oh, Hi, and friends. How are you today? We're better now that you're here. Oh, thanks so much, David. Thanks for having me. And oh my goodness, guys, there's so much going on. I didn't, I didn't get to catch your first news, um, Penny, like I normally love to do <laughs> and be able That's to okay. comment right away. My, there's, there's my so intro going on. I'm doing a vocal intro now with, and it was like four minutes long. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Remember, Kathy yeah, Casker is running for uh, uh, city commission in um, in uh, Miami. Miami. So, yeah. Chris Tasker for Miami.com. Check it out today. Please support her. Donate, and I mean, she's bringing back uh, patriotism Thank and David. responsible. I do have part of that speech that you made, but I'm thinking maybe you have it already posted. Um, I actually have not posted it yet, Penny, but I am going to. So, you know what? You can use that when I'm not here. I think we have so much to talk about, um, like, prior. <laughs> so, basically, I'll just be short with everybody. I actually, and I think we kind of went over some of it last week. I In a, in the town hall, here's basically what happened, because a lot of people have said, you know, how did you have the courage to do this? Well, Penny, you and I have talked about this many times, and David, we follow God. Like, we, like when we hear something, we hear a voice from him. I just act and I do it. And and sometimes I'll stop and argue with him and say, you know, like, but Lord, why would you want me to do this? There's, you know, there's no way. Why would, you know, like you kind of either feel like you're not worthy or there's somebody else that's better to do it, or you really just don't want to do it. I mean, you know, I mean, people think, you know, sometimes we may say things, you know, because we, we do come on podcasts and talk about things. A lot of it, people don't understand that, we actually want to learn from each other. I think that's the first reason I've ever come on a podcast or been on the news. I want mm -hmm. to convey a message of something that I've learned to help someone. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's the first reason I think we all do what we do. And so then God knows our hearts and he knows we're trying to genuinely help people. And he puts the right words and the right people in our path. Well, for me, I mean, obviously I'm Southern, so I kind of tell it like it is, you know, yeah. and I know no two ways about it because, you know, as we know, um, on even my social media, you know, they're really trying to divide and conquer. And David, I'm just going to go to my Facebook page because, you know, we, this has been a very controversial thing. Um, oh, people, yeah. <laughs> I saw this people, last night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, and I wanted to tell the story about it. Okay. Because this is, and for those of you just listening, um, you have a black mama and she is spanking her, she is turning her child over a knee and spanking him. Okay. This is what happened to me as a child. Okay. If, when, when I say this, you know, people, I am actually pro spanking sometimes. Okay. You, you, that doesn't mean a beating every day no. because the reality is, you know, I thought about things before I did them to avoid a spanking. Okay. Kids today, they don't think about anything because they don't think anything is going to happen to them. You know, so there is a catch 22. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to share with you, you know, I actually, I'm not going to say the person's name. You can go on and you can look at the comments yourself because the, there was number one, my cousin from London, um, you know, obviously, you know, a white girl from London, it's my husband's cousin, you know, like thought, oh, this is terrible. Like she immediately took it to racism. Okay. And I just want to share with everybody. This actually came from one of my black friends, oh, yeah. people. This, this came from one of my black friends, a black girl posted it. Okay. So first of all, Number one, if we don't post things with black people in them, we're called racist. If we do post things with black people in them, we're called racist. And I'm going to tell you, I have an Auntie Deb that is the blackest of black. And let me tell you something. She would spank any of us if we got out of line. Okay. And even if we get out of line, she is the first to call to tell you you are out of line and disrespectful and that you need a spanking if you're 40 years old and too far away. Okay. So, I mean... I just don't understand. Well, actually, I do understand. They are trying to divide in any way, shape, or form because my 
other black friend that literally lost a child. She was a client of my store and she is genuinely from Africa. You know how Americans say they're African-American? Okay, right. Well, they're not. They're never from Africa, okay? I mean, I know your heritage may be, and even my auntie Deb says that my mom is more African than than most people that claim that they're African-American um, in America because she has actually lived in Africa. So anyway, um, it, it, but this was also, you know, not only was it originated by a black mama, it was actually shared also by my Filipino godchild because this is the way her parents raised her. Okay. So, you know, it, it just is what it is. David. I want, to, I want to thank you for your support on the post. Um, oh, yeah. by the way, everybody, my Facebook page is open. So um, I think I'm at my friend, Max, you're welcome to send me a friend request, but even my personal page is completely open. Unlike all of my companions, all of my um, fellow candidates in the race. I don't try to hide my profile so that you can't go on and see what my real views are and how long they've actually been that way. <laughs> so um, it's kind of, and, I, to and I agreed with you. And, and like I said, there is, there's a difference between beating a child and an occasional, you know, few smacks on the butt if they get out of line. And, and, and I, when I, I wasn't going to comment, I agreed with you. And then when I saw the vitriol you were receiving for it, I, then I had to, to step up and say, wait a minute, she's right about this, you know, so good for you. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's really crazy. It's really crazy. And, you know, um, so some, some good news, um, you know, me calling it like exactly like I see it. In other words, not mincing any words. So in that town hall, God basically said, I, I did not have a two minute speech prepared. Um, as I'm not really good at like preparing a speech and then having to deliver that exact speech. Okay. Because I think when you do that, you kind of miss the audience. You miss like what's really happening because you're so focused in what you want to say rather than what needs to be said. So I let, the, I let the Holy spirit guide me and, you know, mm -hmm. the things that need to be said. And I ask, you know, for his words, um, I have a lot of prayer warriors praying and, and all the time, because like I have a praying family and I also have, you know, a praying auntie Deb that does spankings. OK, <laughs> so, <laughs> those are the two things that I think in parenting you cannot, you know, you absolutely can't do without. However, I'm, I'm going to say this. My daughter, she does not want to spank her children. OK, that's fine. She doesn't want to spank them. So she wanted timeouts for my grandson. One day, I literally had to take him to time out like 30 times. Yeah. And all, like, not, really, not really that many. I think it was, was only like up, 10. When I was growing up, Christy, probably like you, uh, we didn't have timeouts. We had times up. Right. Yeah, time's up. <laughs> yes, that's right. One, two, three. Don't make me come down there. Well, I will tell you what worked. I do want to tell parents out there what actually did work with my, if you, if you don't want to spank your children and you're totally against it, um, I called my husband who never really spanked his, his children, never got spanking. So um, I said, honey, listen, you know, I've taken, I've taken my grandson to his room, you know, like a, a blue gazillion times. It, this, the whole time out there, it's just not working. He's like his mother. He's not going to listen. <laughs> You know, he's testy. He would come back and do the same thing. Like he's just mad and he is going to show you that he is in control. So my husband says it was all about picking up toys. Oh, so okay. with my, my daughter, I always made her pick up everything before um, I would allow her to go anywhere. And so, you know, so she really wants to make sure, you know, that her children can also pick up their things, you know, because, right. you know, she doesn't want to come home to a complete disaster and she wants them to be able to be, you know, respectable children and be able to clean them up, but she doesn't want to spank them. Okay, fine. So I call my husband and I'm like, listen, this whole time out thing is just not working. He literally went to his room and destroyed his room while he was there. Okay. Like, oh, you know, pulled yeah. every book off the shelf, oh, you know, he was, he's only three. I mean, so he's learning. Right. So, um, you know, in, in the case of my daughter, I mean, like, you know, we had a timeout bench. That didn't work either. She would just turn over the bench and almost hurt herself. Um, very much like I was thinking he was going to do. So um, my husband says, honey, whatever he won't pick up, this is what you do. You tell them, if you don't pick it up, I'm going to take it out the yard and I'm going to bury it. And you're not getting it back until you start listening. 
So he says, and and then you, you give him a timeline to pick it up. So he says, like, like I was going to make him, he wanted oatmeal. So I go get him out of timeout and I say, you know, do you want, do you still want your oat, you want some oatmeal? And he's like, yes, gaga, oatmeal, gaga. You know, he's being like, and, but then he immediately goes downstairs and said, well, will you help Gaga pick up the toys? And he says, no. And I said, okay, but you know, here's the way this is going to work. Gaga's going to go make your oatmeal. And for whatever toys you don't pick up, you don't help Gaga pick up, Gaga's going to take them in the backyard and bury them. And he looked and guess what? My husband was right. I went over to make the oatmeal, completely ignored him. I turned around and he's got all the toys picked up. There you go. So it does, it, that did work. Um, so a little parenting tip for you, especially if you're having to deal with grandchildren. Um, so back to, um, you know, the Lord basically told me with the whole candidacy, you know, just tell it like it is. Like there, there's no better place than a public forum to just lay it on the line, call out the government gangsters and all the people that they are also supporting. So I am obviously one of the final six candidates that are like chosen to go to these town halls. Cause at first as of January 7th, keep in mind, like, I think they just announced that they were going to um, actually hold an election rather than appoint a judge that had already been debenched a family court judge, mind you. Family okay, court. The I, yeah, the one that I showed last week. I, remember when I showed the video last week? Yeah. Everybody should go back and listen to that episode last Tuesday between like 10 15 and 11 o'clock. Okay, so that's when we covered it. So go back and listen to that. So that's the family court judge. They were going to appoint that guy. So now, according to the downtown news, which this is. Keep in mind, my district is very long because it's almost the entire like bay from the port of Miami down to Coconut Grove, which is very beautiful, covered in tree canopies. Mm. And they're constantly having to battle developers who would like to come in and kind of tear down their trees. OK, so one of my first properties that I, um, that I had that I actually worked on um, as an interior designer was my own. And um, we, my mom and I actually preserved a historic home and turned it into a store, but it never looked like a, a store. You know, it always looked like a home. We kept, you know, all the trees, all of the tree canopies, all of everything, because that's what we wanted. Like, you know, we, that, that was, we wanted it to look like a home and for people to have the privilege to be able to come inside of it. So that's, you know, we're, we're battling that on one end and then we're battling everything new on the other, you know, because in the city of Miami, we have, you know, it's called city center and it's like little New York. Okay. So, but the people in coconut Grove, they don't want Brickle 2.0 and we don't need Brickle 2.0. We need, you know, coconut Grove and we need, we need Brickle. So the urban core values are, are very important, obviously to the people in Brickle, but like literally there are, two completely different mindsets in my district. So fortunately I have made the cut in both. Uh, so there have been six candidates chosen to pr participate in a special downtown forum that will take place in the Bay um, in 900 Brickle Bay, uh, excuse me, 900 um, Biscayne Bay, which is a um, building. And um, then there's going to be a candidates forum. So, yeah, so basically, um, with the candidates um, that are chosen um, are, you know, among, you know, of course, the mayor's attorney, Eddie Leal, you know, he's, he's he claims to be the president of his HOA, and he is. Um, he's also assessed his HOA upwards of $50,000 per unit in a single year, and he's failed to hold an election so that he can stay in power, Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not so sure that, you know, he's such a great guy. And according to some of the news, um, papers, he actually got his weenie caught in a meat grinder. Mm. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's literally like one of the headlines on this guy. Like you can't even make this stuff up. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then we've got Max Martinez who owns a marketing agency. He, he ran for, um, mayor and then, you know, there's me. 
And then there's a guy named James Torres who goes by a couple different names. Um, I'm trying to figure out why these people need to go by different names, you know, yeah. online, on their businesses, um, even you on LinkedIn. Do a, search, do a search for them and you'll probably find out why. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to be skip tracing him later today. <laughs> he's got so many, he's got so many like things and um, everybody should just go on his Twitter and see, you know, he's pretty much featured with Suarez all the time. Um, so I'm going to call him as a government grifter and, um, you know, he's, he's on his, on his LinkedIn profile. Uh, oh, he says in the town hall that he doesn't want to talk about his resumes. And I tell people when, oh. when residents are meeting with me, they say, but Christy, like, like you, like you're calling it as it is. I said, no, no, no. They told us, he said, I don't want to talk about my resume. Okay. When somebody says they don't want to talk about something, it's because maybe they don't have anything there to talk about, or the, or it's a lie. Another or like they lie. Lie in right. New York, Santos, right. you know, who lied about everything on his resume. Yeah, and we should ask James Torres uh, because I've got whistleblowers coming forth left and right. This is it's always getting comical, hilarious. So um, James Torres um, actually. Um, <laughs> had someone do his resume for him. I'm like, mm -hmm. you can't do your own resume because you have nothing on it. They're having to fluff your resume. Um, so you know, James would like, kind of like to know, you know, who helped you with that resume? You know, see if he'll tell the truth about that because I know exactly who helped him. Okay. Um, and then Martin Ziegler is the, is the, they're, they're not just calling him a lawyer, you know, but he was elected as circuit court judge twice. And I, and we have to be careful with the word elected here in Miami because there's a lot of selections that go on. Um, remember, I'm able to prove that with my ballots for any of you who would, who would like to research that. Um, so anyway, there's going to be this candidates forum. Um, it's actually held, but I just thought you know, it would be kind of fun to show you what they're interested in. Okay, and what we kind of deal with here. Hola, soy uh, Raúl Guerrero. I'm the editor of uh, Downtown News and the director of uh, DAS, the Downtown Arts and Science Salon. Uh, as you know, uh, we have a, a special election coming up uh, on uh, February 27 for the City of Miami Commission District 3, 2, which... Uh, um, includes uh, downtown Miami and the urban core in general. Thus, in a group of uh, concerned downtown residents have organized this uh, uh, candidates forum, which will take place on uh, February 7, a Tuesday at the 900 Biscay, just across Museum Park or Maurice Ferre Park. To moderate, we have also invited um, well respected uh, former newsman uh, in downtown there, Brian uh, Andrews. Brian. Raul, thanks for asking me to, to join you in this very important public service for our neighbors. Our neighbor. uh, as everyone who lives downtown has a stake in how we are represented. So whomever is our next commissioner is, is a very important question to, to answer. And I know through your newspaper, the Downtown News, you've solicited questions from uh, our neighbors. I have a list of these questions right here. here. Let, let me share with you what some of the downtowners would like for the candidates to be asked. Number one, private property is owned by people and entities, many of which do not employ overnight free guards. We have a real problem with vagrants and homeless people ruining our city. What are you, as the new commissioner, going to do about that? I, I think oh, homelessness you. and the issue of some of this is very important. Brian, one question. Uh, do commissioners have uh, the power to uh, implement policies to end uh, homelessness and pregnancy? Well, our new District 2 commissioner is merely one vote in a multi-vote system to decide on policy. So our new commissioner could bring about a policy uh, that makes major changes to how the city addresses homelessness. And then if he, he or she has consensus with the rest of the members on commission, should that policy be approved, it would then be in the hands of the city manager to implement the policy. Uh, but I think, Raul, you, you've raised a really important point. A lot of downtowners think that, oh, I'm going to call my commissioner. I've got a problem that needs to be fixed. Well, it doesn't work that way. 
we're merely electing someone who's going to be our advocate. And, and Raul, I know that there's 15 people running. You and the downtown news and the DAS have, have kind of whittled the group to a smaller number of candidates who you believe have a really strong interest in, in, in the downtown area. That is correct. The, those candidates that our readers uh, feel are more attuned to our concerns. So speaking of concerns, continue uh, to express some of those. Well, considering that the urban core uh, makes up the largest tax base in District 2, uh, one voter wants to know, do you live and work in these areas? Uh, and do you fully understand our needs? Or are you just another suburban candidate based in Coconut Grove? <laughs> wow, I, I see there's some acerbic... Uh, some acerbic energy in some of these questions. Uh, here's another question from a, from a reader of the Downtown News. What is your vision of the redevelopment of Flagler Street? It's really the, the iconic main avenue through downtown, and it's, it's undergoing a facelift right now. Yes, and uh, as we know, there has been Flagler Street like many countries, the countries of the future, and that's a problem always in the future. So hopefully this time uh, we will be able to see the innovations and to come to fruition. Well, Raul, this is just a, a taste of some of the questions uh, that the downtown news is receiving. How can our readers submit additional questions before the event on the 7th? Okay, you, they can uh, submit directly to downtown news or they can write to rguerrero at dasmiami.com. All right, so if you have more questions, we're more than happy to pose them to the candidates. We have uh, from 6.30 until 8, 8.30 at night at the auditorium at the 900 Biscayne Condominium Tower, a, a beautiful tower in that cluster of high rises right across from the park. Mm -hmm. uh, and it should be a lively and enlightening discussion. Yes, and we are hoping to see you all join us. All right, um, please join us. And if you have any other questions, please check out downtown-news.com for the latest information from Raul and his team of journalists and more information on the upcoming election. Great. See you. Yeah, so they're pretty awesome. Um, so it, one of the things that, um, you know, I've been teaching people as we kind of go through, because, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, our residents don't really know how to report things, you know, because our government, you know, we want to kind of like this should be on the home page of like the website, you know, like mm -hmm. there should be a, like a banner at the top. David, you know, like when people need to know things, right, you, you put it on your home page, exactly. you teach them how to do it, you make it easy for them. But right now, our government doesn't make it easy for anything. Matter of fact, um, <laughs> Uh, the three, there's an app called 311 Direct. Okay, so Miami names the app 311 Direct instead of 311 Miami. So every other city names their app like 311, you know, SF for San Francisco or LA or, you know, so it makes it super easy to find. Like if you're in there, like you could even go on an app, you know, NYC, 311 NYC, if you want to report something, even as a, as a citizen or a, a visitor, even in New York, right? But we make it super hard. We call it 311 Direct. So um, that's what I've kind of figured out with the neighbors. I've had my um, my app on the phone for a really long time and I report things. Does everything get fixed? Absolutely not. But the good thing is I have a reference request and I have a ticket number because it automatically emails you a ticket number. So as a commissioner, I'm gonna be asking people, can you please give me your ticket number? I want everybody to report it because they all have their photos. I want it to go in the system of data that we have, okay? Because it is the only way that things are going to get fixed because what happens with this app, because remember, we're basically operating under two governments here. We have the county and we have the city. So if everybody reports this, and I'm saying this to your audience, David, because almost every major city out there, all of our listeners on here right now, your city probably has a 311 app. You're going to have to go in, just go into your app store or your Google Play store and search for 311 and then your city name. Um, and that should populate up. Then you go in and, and I don't recommend that you let the app track you at all. Okay, so right. make sure you put do not track. Um, and then make sure that you, um, you're basically able to report things such as, you know, your truck, um, your, you know, tr a traffic light being out, any kind of um, sidewalk issue, 
Um, there's potholes and, and they want you to basically send a photo with it. And, um, you know, do make sure that if you post, you know, just post photos, don't post videos so that way your voice is not on um, and post it of the exact thing. Like if there's a pothole, make sure you get like a building in the background so that they can see exactly where the pothole is. Exactly. And this, yep. what happens is this goes directly to like the maintenance goes directly to the right person to fix it. Okay. So that's how we get things fixed faster. Um, and then if, you're, if it doesn't get fixed in a reasonable amount of time, that's when you want to contact your commissioner and give them the ticket number. And I highly recommend that you email your commissioner only so that you have a record of it. OK, so I mean, people can text me and that's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, and, and I can put put it in for them, you know, especially some of the older people. Matter of fact, um, I helped an older person this morning and put one in and he's actually like very interested. He's he's following mm -hmm like on his phone, which I thought was really cool. So he's able to really keep up with it. So that's one of the things I want to make sure, you know, kind of a public service announcement, you know, make sure you're doing this for your government um, and make and, and hold them accountable in that way. So it makes it easy to do that. And then um, have you guys covered, have you covered Wagner Tolls, the U.S. Did, Army? No, no, he did not. Oh, okay. Tell us about it. Okay, so I actually got this from um, this information actually came from a Canadian citizen via a very trusted source of mine. Okay, I have not had a lot of time to research this um, before I came on air. I was actually alarmed. That, you know, she rarely sends me anything. So this is not a person that <clears throat> is unreliable. Um, but Wagner is a source that is trolling our u.s army so and it's a russian source so um when she sent it to me i thought you know maybe it's because especially with it being a bit shoot um link you know i was like okay maybe this is an older video it was actually published um this video was published on um january the 30th it looks like it may be from december uh from december 1991 I don't exactly know when it was covered, but I'm going to show you something really interesting after. Okay. So, well, actually, you know what? Let me actually go to the, let me go to the Washington post. Okay. Instead. Okay. First, I'm going to, I'm going to go here first. And the reason I'm going to go here first is so that you guys can see that this is actually being covered in press briefings. The Biden administration announced on January 20th that it would designate Russia's Wagner mercenary group, uh, a transnational criminal organization. So we know that this is coming from the Washington Post. So here we go. Okay, hold on. Let's see. We expanded the entity. I'm going to go back. Last month, the Department of Commerce designated Wagner as a military end user, which means we expanded the entity listing of Wagner to ensure that it cannot access equipment anywhere in the world based on U.S. technology or production equipment. Today, we are announcing additional actions that we are taking to help Ukraine defend itself against Russian and Wagner forces. First, the Department of Treasury will be designating Wagner as a significant transnational criminal organization under Executive Order 13581 as amended. In coordination with this designation, we will also impose additional sanctions next week against Wagner and its support network across multiple continents. These actions recognize the transcontinental threat that Wagner poses, including through its ongoing pattern of serious criminal activity. With these actions, and there'll be more to come, our message to any company that is considering providing support to Wagner is simply this. Wagner is a criminal organization that is continuing wide, I'm sorry, committing widespread atrocities and human rights abuses. And we will work relentlessly to identify, disrupt, expose, and target those who are assisting Wagner. I believe they all will be convicted. Hmm. You're, you're muted, Christy. Sorry about that. Um, okay. th there's so so now that you've seen that, and, and I think we all have to draw our own conclusions of what's really taking place here, you know, because we have the Biden administration calling this organizational criminal organization. Um, 
we do know that Russia was heavily involved in the Bay of Pigs. Um, so, you know, what is really going on here? And David, I'm going to share, if you'll bring my computer, and I, I want to share this other video. And this is the video that a Canadian actually sent. I'm, I'm going to read this for the audience. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to, I'm going to turn the, the sound off completely. Let's see. I'm going to try to turn it off. I don't know. Are you able to turn it down, David? Let's turn the you sound can, down on the I video. Can, I, I can't, but you can't. You can just turn. Uh, we're, yeah, just turn that to zero. Okay. No, should okay, yeah, okay, I muted it. I think I muted it. Okay, perfect. So let's see if this works. So it's basically the Syrian <laughs> revolution was plotted by the UK um, two years before the protest put took place, former French um, foreign minister Roland Domus confirmed. So again, we have the UK involved um, two years before protests took place in the Syrian revolution. So he's confirming this. He said the matter is more complicated. It's about two camps standing against each other. Let me tell you something. Two years ago, before the start of the events in Syria, I was by chance in the UK for a matter not related to Syria, and I met with UK officials, including friends of mine. They admitted to me that they were preparing something for Syria. That was in the UK, not the US. The UK orchestrated the Syrian revolution. They even asked me, as long as a former French foreign minister, if I would participate. I definitely did not agree. Listen, I am French. This does not concern me. This confirms that this is an operation the so-called Syrian revolution came from. It was orchestrated, organized, and well-known um, well before its purpose. Uh, sorry, for what purpose ask? For a simple purpose, a very simple purpose. Destabilize the Syrian government. In that region, it is important to know that the Syrian regime has anti-Israeli Zionist entity. As a result of everything in the region around it, Zionist entity. I have... A confession from the Prime Minister of Israel, a Zionist entity, we will engage in dialogue with neighboring countries and those who do not. Oh, this is a policy and a perception in history. Why not? But it must be known. Okay, so oh. there we have it. So that's a pretty important piece of information, uh, you know, because we have, you know, French Prime Minister or Foreign Minister, excuse me telling us, you know, that they, they did this on purpose. So, you know, and I say this, David, because it kind of goes back to even, you know, implanting thoughts and things in people's brains, even in America. Okay. Through the media, propaganda, through propaganda and making people immediately think something is racist when it's not. Okay. So like even the post, we'll go back to the beginning of our conversation now, Okay, and come full circle. So in America, they're not having to get their guns and their weapons out on us yet because the weapon is mind control. The weapon is actually propaganda to divide and conquer. If they can divide and conquer us through our thoughts and make someone that knows me really well see that, you know, when when they when when a black person that I've known really really well for a very long time turns around and says, "Oh, this I can't believe you posted this. This is racist of a black mother spanking her black child." Okay, so yeah. I'm just saying that is how they have gotten to us. So I am saying this to all people of all races. We have to confront that issue. We have to let people know. We cannot duck down. We cannot hide behind because as as a conservative person, you know, we can't just duck down and be like, oh, we don't want to engage in this. Just let them have, you know, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm going to take it down. Oh, you're right. No, those days are over because that's wrong. We should have never done that to begin with because that's that's how we have gotten where we've gotten. We got this way by putting on a mask, by capitulating to a government who has no authority over you. You have authority over your government. The government does not have authority over you. You have a Bill of Rights. You have a Constitution. And guess what? You can file things pro se in the court of law. And that, that's if you don't decide to become a sovereign citizen. If you become a sovereign citizen, you actually go into court with 
silver. You know, that's what our constitution is built on. And they want to make people think that our constitution is old, antiquated, and there's absolutely no reason for it to exist, right? Because it's not a living, breathing, fluid document either. It's etched in stone. Right. That's exactly right. And, you know, I, and that's the other thing, you know, I've been talking to people about the Constitution as I go through about the sheriff, because, you know, they're like, you know, Christy, how can we actually stop this corruption, though? Like, I mean, you know, these same people keep getting into office, you know, and they don't understand that we do have power to stop it. OK, we do. We absolutely do. And we have the power with you know, we, we need a sheriff. We need a person who. Constitutional. Um, that it that is the crucial piece of the puzzle, and that is the reason Governor DeSantis, you know, he wrote it in that every Florida county must have sheriff by 2024. Um, I've said it a million times, and I'll keep saying it. We need a sheriff that does not know any politicians or really that much about Miami. People think that oh, they need to know a lot about Miami. Actually, it's quite the opposite. You, the people, need to teach your sheriff about what has been happening so that he can come in with fresh eyes, he or she um, can come in with fresh eyes and actually defend the citizens. It is the only defense in the U.S. Constitution is our sheriffs. So if you are out there and your county, and I say that's because every county, you know, if you've got a sheriff that is corrupt, vote them out of office. Go out and find a sheriff, interview sheriffs, have somebody move in. Um, if like, if you don't really, if, if every sheriff and every police officer, like for instance here, um, I've met with multiple police officers and they've told me they're all dirty, even themselves. Yeah. You know, they're like, we, we just, you know, make sure, you know, they're, they're basically like wanting to, to just get out of the system because they're caught up in a bad system. They're good people caught up in a bad system that the only way they've been able to survive and feed their families, according to them, is to either turn to corruption or if they don't turn to corruption, they're then demoted. You know, so I've heard stories on both sides and believe it or not it's some of our black officers and black female officers that have been demoted for for arresting making arrest of politicians friends so and i've just put those pieces together the arresting officer is then demoted i literally look up the re arresting officer in this guy named joe carollo's case and uh, the arresting officer is then demoted later on i mean it's like you can't even make this stuff up like, you don't even have to look too hard. But the thing is, nobody is really looking really hard, okay? Um, as, a, as a candidate, yes, I should be informing you of other candidates. But at the same time, you know, people, we have to do our own research. You can't just believe everything that you're hearing from anyone, okay? Look it up. Get the facts. Make a decision and make a logical decision. Stop and ask yourself. Would I want somebody to do that to me? Would I do that to someone? You know, if you wouldn't do it to someone, that's usually like a key if you're a good person and you wouldn't do that to someone, you know, whatever it is, then it's probably not a good idea to elect that person, you know? So, so you know, there, there is, you know, it has to be something of that nature. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy busy uh, um, here. And, um, you know, I appreciate you guys having me on and, um, well, the pleasure is ours. Now tell people, give, give you out your, again, it's Christy Tasker for Miami.com. How can they contribute? Yeah, you can contribute to the campaign there. Um, and so Christy Tasker for Miami.com to contribute to the campaign. Um, you can also still just shop on Christy Tasker.com. That's my website where I sell home decor products, um, fashion jewelry, like even the earrings that I have on the toucan earrings, Beautiful. Um, but lots of fun things there. Um, so you can support that way. Um, you can also, um, I would really encourage people to follow my Christy Tasker for Miami. Make sure you subscribe, whether you're actually living here or not, because it will give you a lot of good ideas. Um, ways to look into things to your own local government, because it is important for us to take back our local governments and um, realize what's happening. You know, don't stick your head in the sand. Um, you know, I, I literally, God told me, you know, 
when, when he showed me that I had 22 hours left to qualify, um, he said, you know, you're, you're always telling people to run, you know, what, why won't you run? I need you to run. And so I was like, Oh Lord, I don't even know how to do this. Like, you know, and so I called city hall the next morning and here we are today. And, you know, I, I'm definitely done as the final six. So yes, yeah, so, and they can also do that. And the other thing, David, they can do, that's pretty amazing. I actually just, um, Mike Lindell, I just ordered these oh, slippers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They look really big here. That's because my feet are a size 11. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but listen, he's got the best house shoes ever. And so you can go to mypillow.com forward slash PS this rocks and PS this rocks.com is my lifestyle. Um, my lifestyle blog where I blog about all my travels and all my cool finds and even my parenting and things that I did with my daughter that maybe, you know, that can give you ideas, you know, for parenting and everything. Um, and so, but yeah, those are ways to support me. So you go to mypillow.com forward slash PS this rocks and see the things that I ordered from Mike Lindell. And I'm going to tell you guys, I really question the, I mean, you know, I'm a quality girl. I questioned the quality of, you know, like how can he be selling these products like for so little and they are really, really, really great quality. So, and, and if like thing, term policies easy, but I don't think, I, I, I didn't find anything that I'm going to be returning. <laughs> Good for you. Well, that's fantastic. Folk, you know, I got to, I support you a hundred percent. I wish you were here you, in Michigan, but I'm Miami is going to be blessed to have you as a, as our city uh, commissioner, uh, you know, th th believe me, I, I, I you're, you're fantastic. And you. all politics is local and you're teaching a lot of people. And we look forward to having you on again every week. So uh, we'll talk to you again next week. And thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks so much, David. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, bye-bye. Christy Tasker here on the Dark Outpost. And uh, awesome. Christy Tasker from Miami.com. And, of course, uh, you know, she's got those uh, – those slippers from Mike Lindell, and that's for uh, kicking ass, you know, and she's going to yep. do it. <laughs> comfortably. Uh, yes, comfortably. She'll do it in, com in pink slippers, but, they're, but they, they make an impact. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Nola Lola is coming up next, and we're going to have a great conversation with her on the number.